Hello, today we're going to work on writing equations of lines, quadratics, and exponential functions. We're going to start out with a little review and talk about writing the equations of a line. All right, so we can tell this is just a linear graph, so this is a linear function. Uh, we're going to also talk about concavity, and cavity is just kind of the shape of the curve, um, and as we know, a line is, is straight, so it is neither concave up nor concave down, so it is neither. So when we're using points to find the equation of a, a line, we are used to y equals mx plus b, or point slope form, which is y equals y1 plus m times x minus x1. All right, and so either way, when we're looking at the equation of line, we need to be able to find the slope. And so we know that slope is our m value, and we know that's rise over run, so we take our change in y over our change in x. All right, and if we look at our two ordered pairs that we are given, we know our y value is 25 minus 13, and our x values, if I start with 25, I have to start here with 3 minus 8, and so my slope ends up being 8 over 5, negative 5, so it's negative 8 fifths. Um, now, some of you are probably more comfortable with y equals mx plus b, but I want to encourage you a little bit to use point slope form. Um, it's uh, especially those of you going on to AP Calc, uh, because the AP exam uses slope form, point slope form a lot, as well as the easier po uh, form to use at this point, because you have the slope and you have two points. So if I use the point 8 and 13, I know that's the x and I know that's a y. So I just plug them in, and my equation just becomes y equals 13 minus 8 fifths x minus 8. And I'm done. Now you could have used the other point and used 25 minus 8 fifths x minus 3, and that would have been an acceptable answer as well. A little easier. We could do it in slope intercept form too, but um, they weren't particular about what form, so we just wrote the equation of a line in point slope form. All right, now we'll look at this next shape of graph, and um, hopefully it's a little bit familiar to you. This U-shaped graph is called a parabola, and so we know that all parabolas are quadratic, gra quadratic graphs, quadratic functions. And this is where we really start to talk about concavity. So you can see this graph does have a shape to it. Um, and you can see this graph is an unhappy parabola because he's frowning. Um, and that tells us a couple things. One, that tells us the leading coefficient or the a value is negative, all right, because we're used to negative x squared graphs being unhappy, happy, right? And when we talk about concavity, this is what we would call concavity concave down uh, because it is a um, mountain shape or a frowny face it's concave down versus something that would look like a happy parabola and we'd call that concave up. All right so we need to write the equation of this quadratic given these points all right and we are used to the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals y. That is our standard form for a quadratic graph um, that we learned in Algebra 2. So what I do is I need to find the letters a, b, and c. And I have three values. Right? Anytime looking for three variables, I need three equations to solve. So I have an x here and a y here. So I'm just going to plug it in. So I have a 3 squared plus b times 3 plus c, and the y is 26.6. Then I use the second point, so my x value is 8, so I'm just replacing x with 8, and I'm replacing y with 38.6. And then my last point, my x value is 14, so I replace x with 14, and y with 13.4. Uh, rewrite this just a little bit. So I have, um, I'm just going to write 9a plus 3b plus 1c equals 26.6, 64a plus 
b plus 1c equals 38.6 and 196a plus 14b plus 1c equals 13.4. So now, how we solve for A and B and C, um, there are a variety of ways. We could solve for one variable, plug it in, find another. Um, but that's going to be pretty difficult to do. So um, last year we looked at matrices a little bit, and that's what I would recommend you do here as well. So remember when you deal with matrices, you put the coefficients um, in, and those are just the numbers in front of your variables. So in the first one, it's going to be 9 3 and 1. In the second one, we're looking at 64, 8 and 1. And in the third equation, we have 196, 14 and 1. And we're going to call this matrix A. And then if we multiply it by the variable matrix, which is A, B, C, we end up with the answer matrix, which we're going to call matrix B. So this is a, um, if you remember, matrices are just a different way of representing data. So instead of writing these three equations, we could write this uh, matrix C matrix uh, times the variable matrix equals the answer matrix. And then to solve for the variable matrix, we need to get this matrix A over to the other side. And we do that by multiplying by the inverse. And we have to make sure it's in that order, A inverse B. All right, so now let's go to our calculator and recall how we put these in. OK, so I go to second, uh, x to the negative 1, so it says matrix. I'm going to arrow over to edit. And row by column, so if I look at matrix A, there are three rows and there are three columns. Um, and then I just put these in, 9, 3, 1, 64, 8, 1, 196, 14, and 1. And then I need to go uh, to my other matrix. i got to put in my answer matrix, so i got to put in matrix B here. So I'm going to edit matrix B, and it is uh, three rows by one column. And my answers were 26.6. Oops, three by one, sorry. I don't need 26 rows. I want one row. OK, so oops, sorry. Hear that? I want one row. All right, get down here where I can enter on 26.6, um, 38.6, and 13.4. So those are just coming from matrix B. And then I uh, recommend you just hit second quit. So you're out of the, and now we're going to type A inverse B into my calculator. So to do that, I grab them back. Second matrix A, hit the little inverse key. Second matrix, grab matrix B here, hit enter, and that's what your answers give you. So you can see that A is negative 0.6, B is 9, and C is 5. So when we write the equation, we have negative 0.6x squared. We were thinking that A value should be negative, so that is good that that showed up negative plus 5. And there is the equation to our quadratic. Um, we're going to do one more quadratic. If you uh, know how to do it, go ahead and stop it. Uh, do it on your own if you want to walk through the steps with me. Um, follow along. All right, so again, starting off with writing my equation, a times 1 squared plus b times 1 plus c equals 15, um, a times 5 squared plus b times 5 plus c equals 7, and a times 6 squared plus b times 6 
plus C equals 11. So my matrix A is going to look like 1, 1, 1 across for the first equation, 25, 5, 1, 36, 6, 1. My variable matrix is ABC, and my matrix B is 15, 7, and 11. So when I go to my calculator, I'm going to go back to matrix, and I'm just going to edit. I'm just going to edit A because it's already a 3x3, three three, so I can hit 3x3 three three again um, and type in 1, 1, 1 across, 25, 5, and 1, and 36, 6, and 1. Now I'm going to go edit matrix B. It is a 3 by 1, and I'm going to put these numbers in, which are 15, 7, and 11. Go to the home screen. I've already got A inverse B here, but um, if you need help getting those again, you can do second matrix A inverse, second matrix B, hit enter, and these are your values for ABC. So we can see A is 1.2, B is negative 9.2, and C is 23. So our quadratic equation is 1.2x squared minus 9.2x plus 23. Now anyone that doesn't really believe that you can go check it out by looking on your calculator and saying, okay, well, let's just put that in here and see if that actually is true. x squared minus 9.2x plus 23. And then if I want to look at my table, and I want to see, I'm just going to go ask here. So I just want to ask those certain points. Um, now I can put in, okay, well, um, my points they gave me were 1, 5, and 6. So I'm just going to say, okay, what does it give me at 1? It gives me 15. At 5, it gives me 7. At 6, it gives me 11. So it's outputting the same values that my problem gave me, so I know I am actually correct. This is the quadratic that goes through those three initial uh, points they gave me. All right, the next curve we talk about is this exponential function. All right, and as you can see on this one, it kind of has that happier look to it. So it is what we call concave up. And we need to use the points to find the equation for this graph. All right, so we start out with the general. What is the general exponential equation? which is y equals ab to the x. We have an x, a y, and an x, and a y. We're only looking for two variables, so therefore we only need to find two equations. So one equation is going to be 9 equals ab to the 8, and the other equation is going to be 4 equals ab cubed. All right, so now how are we going to solve for A and B? Well, some of you may remember when we had two equations and two unknowns, uh, there was substitution, which means we solved for one variable and plugged into the other. But the other method we had was elimination, which we, meant we tried to make one of the coefficients the same and then we add it together. Well, what we do to solve two equations when it's exponential is we actually go through and divide. So when I divide these guys, I have 9 divided by 4, which is just 9 fourths. But A divides A out, and we know if I have the same base and I have exponents, my rule tells me I need to subtract. So 8 minus 3 is 5. And so now I have 9 fourths equals B to the fifth. And now I got to solve for b, and so I got to get rid of the exponent 5 
And so if it was a 2, you'd take the square root. So if it's a 5, we take the fifth root. And I personally just would write this as 9 fourths to the 1 fifth instead of doing the fifth root. You can on your calculator go find the fifth root by going to math. And you can see number 5 there. So if I would do this correctly, I would put the 5 in. Then I'd go to math, hit 5, and do 9 divided by 4. And that automatically will give me the, the fifth root. Um, but what I'm recommending, because that's just kind of an extra step that I don't like to take, I put 9 fourths in parentheses, and then I put 1 fifth up here. And some of you need to put one fifth in parentheses if you have to use the caret symbol and it doesn't bring you up to the top. So it's good to get in that habit. You can see either way you're going to get B to be 1.176. We're going to use three decimal places. So B equals 1.176. And now we can use either equation to solve for A. So when I'm looking at Solving for a, I can put it back into the first one. So I have 9 equals a, this number. I'm actually not going to round it. Um, I'm going to leave it in my calculator as is. So I just put it right back here, a, b to the 8th. And I need to solve for a. So basically, I just go ahead and take this side and divide it by 1.17 to the 8th, 1.176 to the 8th. So what I would do here is I would just raise this to the 8th, and then I would take 9 and divide it by my answer, and I get 2.459 for my A value. So therefore, A is 2.45. 9, and we go back to our original equation, which was y equals a times b to the x. We stick a in there. We stick b in there. And that is the exponential equation that goes um, through those two points. And again, if you want to double check, you can go back to your y equals and check to make sure those are the points you go through. All right, I'm going to do one more exponential function here, going through two points. Uh, go ahead, pause, try it on your own, or follow through, whichever you feel you need uh, to do. All right, so I know I'm starting with y equals a, b, the x. I know one y value is 10 equals a, b to the second, and the other is... 6 equals a, b to the fifth. Now, I personally would recommend you always put the exponent that's bigger on top. So when you divide it, you don't end up with negative exponents. All right. Um, we can see that this is getting less. The y values are getting less. So that should tell us something about b. Um, that should tell us that b is actually a, a number less than 1 um, because if it's growth, right, if the equation is getting bigger, then this value would be greater than 1. But if it's decaying, this value has to be less than 1. All right, so we kind of have an idea what our answer might look like. The a's are going to cancel off, and we have b cubed. Got to get rid of the cube, so I take the cubed rid of it. Go to my calculator, do 6 tenths, and I'm just going to raise it to the 1 third. And I get B to be that value, 0 0.84. 0 0.843. Um, now I substitute this back into either equation, this guy or this guy, whichever one you want to use. I'm just going to use the squared one. So I have 10 equals a, b, 8 .8 0.843 squared. And again, I'm not going to round this in my calculator. I'll leave it fine on my paper, but I want to make sure I get it exactly right on my calculator. So I square b, and then I take 10, and I divide by that number. And that will give you 
your A value. So you can see if I divide this we end up with A equals 14.057. Put it all together now. Y equals AB to the X. So therefore, Y equals 14.057. B, which I said initially should be below 1, and 0.843 is. And there is our ex exponential equation. All right, hopefully this is enough to get you uh, trying. Give the on your own a shot, and we will work more on these tomorrow. Have a nice night.